What's really neat about transplant surgery is you actually take care of the patients as a surgeon in advance and then during the surgery and then in our program about three months after. So you really do develop a bond and there is a high level of trust that happens during those initial visits and after the surgery. I have some lifelong bonds with patients who will email me, text me, send me pictures of their families, sometimes show up at clinic and just say hello. And so I think that really is what gives you the passion and excitement to continue to do what we're doing. We're really changing people's lives with transplant. And in terms of kidney transplant, many people are on dialysis or nearing dialysis. They're not feeling well. They get an organ and they're really grateful to their organ donors and the team that's helped deliver that care to them. So that really bonds me as a surgeon to my patients. Uh, that is essential though. We can't do this without being a team and I consider the patient part of the team. So we as a program follow the transplant patients as long as their kidneys are surviving and um, I follow them specifically during that surgery time which is about three months after the transplant and then our team, our nephrology team and coordinators will follow them after that. Many times patients will have a kidney transplant. They don't last forever unfortunately and that's a result of some of our medications. It's also a result of um, the immune system and so um, many times our younger patients will often need two kidneys, sometimes even three kidneys in their lifetime. So that's why we so strongly recommend living donation because those kidneys do last the longest uh, and we want our patients to have that first graft last as long as possible. Uh, and then from there, if they need to get another kidney, they can get another living donor kidney or they can have a deceased donor kidney. The first transplant was done in 1954, but there have been significant advances that really came in the 70s and 80s, and a lot of the work on immunosuppression happened during that time, allowing people to accept their grafts longer, and then really seeing increases in number of transplants and organ donations performed, and as well as living donation, and then the paired donor exchange program. So, it continues to grow and evolve over time. Many aspects of surgery are kind of where they are. There's still some innovation, but this field is just growing and burgeoning uh, year by year. So things that they're working on are continuing to try to refine the immunosuppression medications so that we can eliminate the ones that cause damage to the kidneys and allow people to have their grafts last a lot longer. We're also seeing a lot of work on xenotransplantation and perhaps increasing the donor pool by using an additional source of kidney, which may be ki uh, pig kidneys, and um, also 3D printing and other technologies. So a lot of work happening to really advance the field. Yeah, it's really important that we are able to educate the next generation of transplant providers and nurses and all of our team members. It's also important that we innovate and continue to do research, uh, investigating disparities in access to transplantation and some of these other exciting areas of immunosuppression and xenotransplantation. Without an academic medical center, it's really difficult to do that. So aligning ourselves with the University of Texas and being that academic medical center, we really stand a chance to make a significant impact in transplantation.